This video is sponsored by Desenio. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and you are watching Studio Fix, the series where I tackle teeny tiny apartments under 500 square feet and show you how to make them beautiful, stylish, and organized. You got a makeover to do, so. <gasps> wow, that looks stunning. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's get started. If you have found this channel through the Studio Fix series, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I tackle small spaces, help renters. You don't wanna miss a thing. Hit that subscribe button. Today, I am helping Ricky make over her studio apartment in Toronto. Ricky reached out to me and I immediately knew that I wanted to take on her space because she has given back to the community so much, especially over the last two years, helping kids navigate the pandemic. So it's time to give back to her and make sure she has a comfortable, stylish space. It's gonna be a big transformation. So Ricky just moved in a few months ago to the studio and like every studio, it is an open space with her bedroom, her living space, and she also works from home. So it's four spaces in one, including the kitchen. I wanna jump on a call with her, talk through the space, get to know her a little better and see what she envisions. Hi. Hi, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm good, it's so nice to meet you. You as well. <laughs> I would love to know when you moved into your space, your thoughts on what's working in your space, what's not working in your space. So I moved in here May 2nd, actually, so I'm just freshly new here. Okay, like two months. I was in Niagara, I was in Thorold, Ontario for a little bit with my mom during the whole pandemic then moved into this space. And so I work in youth mental health. I just need a space where I can just kind of be like, okay, Zen, when I get home and just yeah. get rid of that stress. So, so far what's working for me right now is how I have it divided for where my bed is and where my living space is. I have like a bookshelf that's dividing that. My office areas, not so much. <laughs> in your kitchen? Yes, it's in my kitchen. <laughs> Where I have my TV is not really working either. It's kind of like just kind of set there. So the only thing that's really working is the bookshelf. Got it. I really like the bookshelf. I definitely want to incorporate that into the new design. How do you feel about us painting it? I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. And talk to me about the little nook beside your makeshift office. I'm so curious to know why that is not your office. Because I don't really have a table for it. Got it. <laughs> and I didn't really know if there was enough space for a table. So I was like, okay, well, let me just use this. Is your dream to have like a dining table or would you rather have like a proper space to work every day? Like what's the priority? I would rather have a proper space to work in. And you work from home like permanently. Yeah. yeah. This is always a struggle, especially now with people living in smaller spaces and like having to, you know, entertain, sleep, live, work. But you also have that kitchen counter, which I was thinking would be great for stools. So like that could be your, your dining area. I love cooking and I love okay. cooking for friends. So I like to entertain. So I still want that that option. But that's good to know, like your priorities are working from home, but then entertaining, cooking, and just having like a comfortable space. That's what we all want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I loved your inspo that you submitted, Kim White's space. Yes, oh, I love that space. It's so good. It's like neutral, but also a little boho, and there's lots of like pops of gold. Yes. Love to know what drew you to her inspo and what you hope to implement in your own space. So I love her mirrors with the gold. I love that. I pretty much love everything about her space. Like I love the colors, the oranges, the gold, the tans. It's so inviting, it's warm, oh, I love it. Also, I saw in your befores that you have a lot of giraffes. Can you talk to me about the giraffes and like what they mean to you and if you would want to implement giraffes into your space? I, I'm giraffe obsessed. Like everybody who knows me in my life knows that giraffes, right? I've got giraffes everywhere already as it is. So yeah, I, I definitely want to implement them in here. I have some ideas, but I just wanted to run it by you before I was like went on full on giraffe. <laughs> You know, I just wanted to check in. <laughs> yeah, totally okay. Is there anything else you want me to keep in mind when planning the space? 
I've seen a lot of what you've done and every single time you knock it out of the park. So oh. I feel like I kind of want to just like lean back and just let you do your thing. Because <laughs> I love that. that. That's the biggest compliment <laughs> ever to have someone just be like just do your thing that's like the biggest compliment i'm so excited <laughs> i can't wait thank you ricky have a great day bye so ricky gave us one main piece of inspo which was kim white's apartment tour on apartment therapy i love that she just gave us really one thing to work with for her inspiration because we can fully lean into this we noticed in kim white's space that there was lots of jungle pieces jungle is an amazing brand by justina blakeney so we're kind of mixing in jungle pieces jungle inspired pieces and just really leaning into this eclectic boho vintage inspired makeup over. It's super clear to me that Ricky needs a new office space first and foremost. She's working basically in her kitchen. It does not look comfortable at all and she has open space beside the kitchen. It seems like a whole other room that is really being underutilized. So I'm definitely gonna make that the office space. Also Ricky on the call mentioned that she loves giraffes. She has a ton of giraffes around her apartment and so I really want to lean into that. I want to try to source a wallpaper to go behind the desk to visually divide the office area from the rest of her living space and it needs to have giraffes on it for sure. I am gonna use a color I've never used on the channel before. This color is Rich Coral by Benjamin Moore. And I wanna paint the accent wall where the TV is gonna go and her Calax unit this color to just really make a statement. I want it to feel happy but cozy and warm at the same time. I definitely wanna keep the Calax where it is. This piece is such a great way to divide the bedroom from the living room, but the living room needs a bit of work. I think I wanna reconfigure the sofa so it's facing that beautiful accent wall where her TV is gonna go. I have found this gorgeous headboard. I think it's so perfect for Ricky's space. And so we're going to try and get our hands on that. It's from the States, so we have to import it into Canada. Have my ways, fingers crossed. I definitely wanna bring in lots of texture with a boho inspired rug, new bedding, and a few art pieces from Desenio. I have used Desenio prints in a few studio fixes before. Desenio offers Scandinavia's widest range of affordable wall art that is always in line with the latest interior design trends. One of the things I love most about their selection is that they have wall art for so many different design styles, which is why it's so great to use them in a variety of my makeovers. Desenio also sells frames, picture clips, picture ledges, poster hangers. It's really your one-stop shop for everything wall art. They ship worldwide, including the US. Shipping usually takes four to seven business days and they really have something for everyone's style and they're always updating their collection. Of course, I have a discount code for you. This is a crazy discount code. You can get 40% off your next Desenio order using my code alexandragator40 and my link in the description box below. I can't wait to show you these prints up and on the wall later on in the makeover. Hi guys. So while well, Graham is prepping Ricky's, he's doing some painting. Actually, I think that's all he's doing is painting. Yeah, but like a lot of painting. Like a lot of painting. We are off to run some errands for Ricky's makeover. Alana's on vacation. It takes two of us to do Alana's job, apparently. <laughs> we are heading to Urban Gardener. That's our first stop to get some plants for Ricky's because it wouldn't be a boho, jungle inspired makeover without plants. Urban Gardener is one of my most favorite plant stores in Toronto. I go there so often to buy plants for my own home. I also want to mention that if you guys can't come to their store like physically in Toronto, you can also shop their Instagram stories. Every single day they update their stories with all the plants they have in stock and the prices. And then you order, they package it up for you, and then you pick it up curbside, which is very handy. I've done that many times. We're here, look how cute it is. probably like the most beautiful plant store in Toronto. I also love all the pots they carry. It's where I've gotten those pink pots that you guys asked me about in the studio to hold Petunia, the fiddle leaf. Look at all these hand painted pots, you guys. Our shopping list for today is a Birds of Paradise, a cactus, and some sort of hanging plant that we can put on the wall. Obviously, 
this Birds of Paradise right here is like the hero plant, but I think it's gonna be too big for Ricky's studio. We are working with a small space. I need to rain myself in a little bit. And then there's this guy too, which is a little bit smaller, but still I think a little too big. So I think we're gonna go with this guy. He's actually so perfect. And look at him in his little floor planter. The beauty of these plants is that they grow really quick. So he'll be able to grow into Ricky's space, which I like. He's coming home with us. I feel like this one is very jungle inspired. Really cute. Aaron, the owner of this plant shop, said that these actually grow quite fast, which is great. So I love that I'm giving Ricky plants that she can really grow into and like take care of and then watch them grow. I love, love, love a string of hearts. I have one in my living room that is literally ceiling to floor in length, but I want something a little more full. So this is cute. Look at this guy. Perfect. He's cute, right? So I got him, the cactus, and the birds of paradise. Are you ready to lug it to the car? I certainly am. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> AC's blasting. It is so hot outside. We got our plants in the back. And now we're headed to HomeSense because we need some extra things to decorate the Calax that we're keeping in Ricky's studio. I'm thinking baskets for storage, trinkets, just cute things. So we'll see what we can find at HomeSense. And we also need to get plant pods for the plants we just got. Let's do it. We've already secured the planters for Ricky's, I think. Look at these boho ones, they're so cute. Reminder to always measure your pots before you buy them. And HomeSense has tape measures in here, which I didn't know. Yes, they sure do, Amanda. Hot tips. Unclear what that is. A cactus. Maybe we could turn it the other way. <laughs> but this is cute. It is very cute. Because it will match? Yeah. Yeah, love it, it's a vibe. This could be cute for the cactus. A little bowl we can put like, I don't know. Stuff. And I also got this really cute photo frame. This feels very jungle to me. Ricky has lots of family photos, so we can pop something in there. Probably every makeover. I would say every makeover, we always light a candle for the homeowner, and they always are like, oh, it smells so good in here. And HomeSense always has the best candles. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Cute, I'm getting this one too. We did not come to the good lamps. But this is a vibe. It's a vibe. It's kind of fun. Very fun. It's like hair. This is a good size. Cute. Definite home scent success. I feel like we have a bowl, we have a couple baskets, we have some candles. Let's check out. While Amanda and I are shopping, Graham is at Ricky's starting to paint the Calyx unit and the accent wall. If you want to paint your Calyx unit, you want to make sure you sand the whole thing down and priming it with a really strong adhesion primer. Then you want to go in with a latex-based paint, or if your unit is going to see a lot of traffic, if you're going to be taking books on and off of it, you want to use an oil-based paint, which is going to be really durable. Regardless of what kind of paint you use, you want to make sure that the unit cures for at least 24 to 48 hours. This is going to ensure that the paint hardens and that the unit isn't gonna get scuffed up when you start to place things on it. I've asked Graham to only paint a section of this accent wall using our white line trick for a really crisp finish. Where the accent wall ends is where the Calyx unit is going to fit seamlessly into place. So Graham just texted me, really exciting, and he said he wants to show me the first coat of paint. I'm actually slightly terrified, but it's only because it's such a bold color, but bold is good. <laughs> you wanna count down and then I'll flip the camera over? One, two, three. Whoa! Okay, that's actually so fun. Honestly, I was smiling the entire time putting it on because it's like <laughs> a fun color, you know what I mean? Like it just adds so much to this room. I have to say I was so nervous, but I really like it. I can like breathe a sigh of relief now. When I first put it on, I was like, okay, it's really bright. And then it just kind of like toned itself down a bit. Yay, thanks Graham for <laughs> checking in. No worries. <laughs> this color is bold. It's a bold choice, but we love making fun design decisions on this channel. It's always so nerve wracking with paint because I never truly know what the homeowner is gonna like. 
taking a risk, and I'm really, really hoping it pays off. Hi guys, I'm so, so excited to be filming today. Just me, Amanda, and Graham. Hi. <laughs> As you guys saw, Graham was here yesterday. He painted the wall and the Calax this beautiful, truly an orange color. Graham texted me last night and I had a little bit of a freak out because it looked like it dried like neon orange, but it's not neon orange in person. And all of the accessories we have to go in this space complement it so well. So I'm really excited about the wall color. I wanna show you all the boxes that are in here. Do you guys think that this is more stuff than usual? It's at least twice as much. But it's like a smaller space than we're used to working with boxes so excited about this rug the plant amanda and i picked up the other day cushions some more boxes over there <gasps> is this all of our old furniture yeah <laughs> She left us a little care package. How cute. So nice. Thank you, Ricky. And before I wrap this segment up, Amanda has an announcement. I'd like to show this. Yeah, it's pretty genius. It's if you want to make your boxes confidential with your address, you just put this on. So Alessandra's happy because no one can see the addresses. And we don't have to blur it out. We have to blur it out. We are going to get unboxing. Let's do this, guys. So our friends at Junglo, I can't believe I can say that, our friends at Junglo sent us some beautiful products, including, I can't, like these insane wall sconces. If you're all wondering how we get Target sent to Canada, I do it through this service that I've talked about on my Instagram. It's a freight forwarder called Cross Border Pickups. But the headboard that we have for Ricky, long story short, didn't deliver until yesterday, and they couldn't expedite it for us. So it's basically sitting, we don't even know where it's sitting, Niagara Falls. If you're in a rush to get the product, like we usually are for shoots, or if your item is lost, the customer service is not great at all. You can't talk to anyone on the phone unless you actually go to the office. I mean, when you go to the office, they like can't help you. So I would just say the service works when it works, but just be, just be aware. And so yeah, we're waiting for a headboard. We're hoping a miracle happens. We're hoping a miracle happens. So Ricky has a lot of family photos. So we're doing a little like family photo wall and there's so many beautiful frames. It's like stone. Okay, we have unpacked and now it is time my friends to wallpaper this wall. So Ricky has been working here. I just don't think that this is making use of all of this space that she has back here. Also, this is just like not comfortable. Like no. No, no, no. So in order to divide the space, I wanted to have like a visual cue that this was, you know, somewhere different in the apartment, which is why we're putting up wallpaper. And as you guys know, Ricky is obsessed with giraffes. They're like her thing. So I had to find a wallpaper that had some giraffes in it. And I'm having a little debate mostly with myself about where the wallpaper ends. I was thinking where the line is now, which is where this little alcove starts because I want the kitchen to feel separate. Like I really want this to be a visual cue that this is her office space. That being said, Graham and I are gonna start wallpapering. We're gonna wallpaper up this line and then if I feel like I wanna carry it to the island or a little bit further, then we, then we will because we have enough. But that makes the kitchen feel like a separate space. So. I just hate the first piece. I know. The worst. I know. We gotta get it right. So the technique here when you're installing peel and stick wallpaper is to peel off a bit of the backing and then smooth. You just wanna take your time with this. Don't rush it. The first panel is always the hardest. You definitely need two people to install wallpaper, just like an FYI. We have to smooth from this side, from the line, across. Most walls aren't straight, so you don't want to try and line your wallpaper up to your ceiling or the corner of the wall. What you want to do is use a level or a laser level like we are doing and line up the panel instead to that straight line. That might mean you have gaps on the top and the side of your wallpaper, but I feel like you never really notice because the wallpaper just looks straight. <laughs> To hide the gap as much as we can on the side of the wallpaper, Graham and I are kind of like folding it over and we're gonna cut down the side to make it look as straight and clean as possible. 
Now it is time to cut the edges. If you want a super precise cut, you might wanna wait till all your panels are up on the wall. I really jumped the gun here and started exactoing it at the bottom. The more precise thing to do, especially if you haven't done this before, is to wait till all the panels are up and then just cut all the excess at once. Graham tip. Don't forget to turn the power off when you cut around an outlet, because you don't want to electrocute yourself. Because we're not carrying this wallpaper all the way into the kitchen, we want to make sure the line is as crisp as possible. So I am just cutting the panel down so it's easier to work with, not to the exact size we need it. You wanna leave a little bit more. We are cutting it down to the precise size with an X-Acto knife and a straight edge once it's up on the wall. We did it, Graham. We did it, we did it, Joe. Next up, we are building this beautiful desk from Article. I chose this because I wanted to give Ricky a lot of desk space, but I wanted this to take up the least amount of space as possible. Ricky is gonna use the rest of this room to work out in. She does a lot of yoga and stretching. So I needed this desk to take up as little space as possible, but I also wanted to give her lots of storage. So these kinds of desks are perfect because they are mounted on the wall, taking up the least amount of footprint as possible. Really maximizing vertical wall space, which I love doing. Okay, I have a controversial thing to say. Because the desk is centered perfectly between the two wallpaper panels, should we take down the third wallpaper panel that we took so long to put? Hear me out. I feel like it fits so well right here, and then you have this extra panel. It kind of feels like it's just hanging out. If you're sitting here, yeah. eating like your cereal, yeah. You're, you feel like you're in the, you're like exactly, in, you're in like the office, office side. Yeah. Because then it's really going to feel like this is her office, which was the reason for the wallpaper. Maybe you have James edit this out. Just like blur it. Yeah, so you can get a good look. James. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to. Let's just tear it down. I think we should. I really do. As always, design is a process. You gotta see things in person and just go with the flow. Remember that if you have installed peel and stick wallpaper, when it's time to remove it, you wanna use a hair dryer to make sure it is absolutely coming off as clean as possible. A lot of people make the mistake of just ripping it off the wall and then they're like, wait, this was supposed to be renter friendly. It's because you're not using heat. This looks so much better. And now we have all this space to work with to set up a little breakfast nook. We are moving on to a light for this little nook. The first option is a thrifted vintage find. This is so cool, so different. And the reason Alana and I wanted to use a light like this was because in Kim White's space, she has a vintage light very similar to this one. But we have this light from HomeSense, $80, such a good find. I'm gonna have Graham hold up both and we'll see. I actually think this is gonna be too big, but. We have to like turn it into a hard wire situation. Yeah. Wait. I know. I was thinking that too. Got it. I don't know. What? You're speaking in code. Sorry. <laughs> this locks so much of the desk. Like it, it is too big. So we're gonna put this in the living room. It's plug in. So we're just gonna swag the light with a cup hook in the ceiling. We're gonna use the two wall sconces for the bedroom area and then the thrifted light in here. I'm just gonna have so much light, she's not even gonna know what to do herself. Okay. <laughs> Eight. Woo! This is so cute. That was a very productive day. Unboxed everything, built everything we can, and I will see you guys tomorrow for reveal day. Hey guys, just popping in here really quickly to let you know that if you want me to make over your space virtually, we have a handful of virtual design packages available in the Palmed Marketplace over on my website. They will be available until tomorrow, so if you want one, go grab one. Limited quantities, when I say limited, I really mean limited. Link is in the description box below to shop. Hi guys, it's a reveal day. I'm so, so, so excited to see this space come together. So yesterday, Graham and I built the desk as you guys saw, put up the wallpaper. We're gonna fasten the desk to the wall. I think that's the first thing we're gonna do. And then we're going to move over to the bedroom and the living room area and just get this place made over. What? 
pan that camera towards mom and dad. Mom and dad. Look at them. Like they're just so cute. <laughs> Graham is mounting the desk so it is secure on the wall. And I'm gonna get started with the rug in the living room. This is from the Boho Lab. They have a location in Toronto and Montreal. So many of you actually ask where I got my living room poof from. I get so many questions whenever I post a photo of my living room. It is from the Boho Lab. All of their rugs, poofs, everything in their store is directly from Morocco. I actually went to visit their family's store while I was in Morocco and it was so cool. So these are like authentic Moroccan rugs, handmade. These colors together are incredible. Incredible. And I think this is such a great reminder that sometimes things don't have to be like matchy matchy. We can get that eclectic feel with similar tones on the wall, in the rug. It's so good. Let's bring in the sofa. Of course, I called up my friends at Article who gifted us this beautiful leather sofa. Oh, it's so good. It smells just as good as it looks. I love article leather sofas because they age so well. You can scratch these up, you know, not be precious with them and they will just get better with age. It's that time. <sighs> Makes me like feel some kind of way. Like look how crisp that is. So that is crisp. Ooh. I'm so excited about this piece because it just instantly divides the studio apartment into a living room and bedroom area. And she has such a great amount of space in each like room. I will forever use this as a hack. I've talked about this Calax so many times and she's actually done it in her space and painting it the same color as this accent wall just ties it all together. Next we're bringing in this gorgeous coffee table also from Article. Wow, I can't believe how much space there is in this living room. I actually thought we might not be able to use the coffee table because the size of this living room, but it works so well. You wanna unbox it with me? Whoa. Whoa! People can gather around this table. People can sit on the sofa. We have some floor cushions coming in at the end. I'm kind of shocked. I thought there was way less space than there is. Now it's time to hang the TV on the wall. If you can, get a really inexpensive television mount from Amazon to hang your TV on the wall. It saves space and I always feel like it just looks more put together. So I enlisted Graham to make a media unit for under the TV. I wanted somewhere where Ricky could put her remotes and just like add more storage because storage in a studio is always needed. And together we came up with this really cool wavy shape. Here's how Graham made it. Hi James, this is Ricky's TV console. So the first thing you wanna do is measure the width of your TV and you wanna use this as the width for your TV console. You could go a bit wider. I would not recommend going smaller because that's gonna look funny, but you could always go wider than the TV or to size of the television. Using a piece of hobby board, Graham drew a cloud shape on the board and you want to keep drawing over your lines with a pencil until you're happy with the shape. Keep in mind the depth of the shape depending on what you plan on putting in the console. Next, Graham took a jigsaw and cut out the shape. He sanded it down as much as possible using a rough grit sandpaper until all the rough edges were gone. Then what you wanna do is trace this shape onto another piece of hobby board and cut that piece out as well. Next, Graham is cutting this piece in half with a circular saw so that the front part can be used as a hinged door. Using a miter saw, he cut down half inch dowels to a five inch length. Use a piece of string to measure the length of the cloud shape to figure out how many pieces of doweling you will need. And a tip here is before you actually cut the dowels down, wrap a piece of 120 grit sandpaper around the dowel to sand down before you cut. Next, you wanna cut a bunch of small cube pieces of wood, roughly one and a half inch wide. Using a combination of wood glue and a brad nailer or finishing nails and a hammer, glue the cubes a half an inch from the edge of the rounded cloud edge. This is how you're going to secure the dowels to the cloud shape. You can see that Graham is using wood glue and a brad nailer to secure the dowels side by side and he's following the rounded cloud shape until he reaches the end. Next, Graham is cutting a piece of two by six lumber and he's securing it to the back of the unit with wood glue and construction screws. Now he's securing the top to this two by six. 
Next, he's adding a French cleat to the back to secure the piece to the wall. He's using a piano hinge, but you could use a continuous hinge to attach the top of the cloud door piece. Next, he's rounding the edges of the cloud piece with a round over router to get a smooth rounded edge. Use wood filler to fill in any of the screw holes or nail holes, and then it's time to sand and paint. I asked Graham to paint the whole thing the same color as the accent wall to give it a bit of a built-in look. The light's going up. This light is from HomeSense. I love it, and it's plug-in. So I am just going to plug it in and then swoop it over this hook, and we're gonna have a little light moment in the corner. Want it to hang down a bit, like kind of low. That is way too low. <laughs> it's so low. Graham! <laughs> okay, wait. Like, I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna fix it. That did nothing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, got it. No. Let's at least turn it on. There is. Oh, my God. There is. No. no, there's not. No. <laughs> um, is this is this a good height? It's so light. It's like it's, it never moves out. Really? <laughs> okay, well, Graham just did it in three seconds. <laughs> Cozy. So good. So one of the main focal points in Kim White's space is this beautiful like palm mirror. And I knew as soon as I saw this from the Jungle O collection at Target that I needed it because it really riffs off the inspo we're following. <laughs> you can see my light. Can you see your light? Yes, actually. See my light. What an iconic mirror. I always hate walking away from mirrors because I think they're just gonna like smash. <laughs> okay, let's finish decorating this wall. Cute. This is such an amazing functional piece of furniture, so I wanted to see how I could make it even more functional. So I enlisted Graham to make these custom storage bins that double as side tables. Are you ready to see them? They're so cool. The first thing you wanna do is pick up some 12 inch or 14 inch European standard drawer slides. Then you wanna measure the width, height, and depth of your Calyx unit. Using hobby board or plywood, you wanna build a box so that there is a little bit more than a one inch gap. The European drawer slides add roughly a half an inch on either side, so you wanna give yourself a little bit of wiggle room of one eighth inch on either side. I know this is a lot of measurements, but you just wanna make sure you're measuring precisely because you wanna make sure your box that you're building fits on the hinges which are gonna go into the Calyx unit. Next, Graham is filling all holes with wood filler and he's sanding down all the surfaces. He's using primer and using two coats of paint to be safe. We decided to add a decorative top. So Graham is cutting the wood piece from the same dimensions of the box and he's securing it to the box from the inside of the box using wood screws. Okay, so upon first glance, you're like, oh cute. A little storage cubby in here. There's a shelf, pull it out. And it becomes a side table. Surface and storage. Carla asked a good question. She said, can Ricky move this to any other square? The answer is no. We put tracks in this cubby and we put it so it was at the height of the sofa. So it truly is a custom built-in piece just for the square. So now it is time to move on to the bedroom area. I'm hanging this beautiful wall sconce from Jungalo. It's so beautiful. It's like warm. It just is gonna be the perfect little reading light for Ricky. Okay. Now I'm hanging these two gorgeous prints above Ricky's bed from Dizenio. Quick tip here, if you're not adding a headboard to your space, art prints is a really great way to add a bit of a decorative touch. Remember on prep day when I was filling you guys in about the headboard and how we had it sent to Canada? It didn't arrive on time and I'm mad because we really, really tried to make it happen. Amanda went to the Cross Border Pickups office. I was on the phone with the delivery company and they made it happen a day earlier for us. It was just the Cross Borders was not able to execute.
expedite it for us, which is such a drag. The headboard would have been so beautiful, but I think that these art pieces are also a really great way that we're zhuzhing up this space and making it feel cozy and warm. So it all worked out in the end, but darn. This is why you guys should subscribe because you can see this beautiful headboard in upcoming makeovers. This happens sometimes. We don't get decor on time, we implement it into other design plans and we make it work. Let the joyous news be spread, the wicked old witch at last is dead. Next is time to make the bed feel cozy, warm, inviting. My new thing is actually making people's beds feel like they belong in a hotel. Amanda just said that they look even better than a hotel bed, which is saying something. Refer to Tiffany's bed. Roll the clip of Tiffany's bed. I was really on the hunt for a bedspread that had texture. We're using these jungle pillows to add some color, and now it just feels like a room, even though it's all in an open space. So you guys are probably wondering, but what about Ricky's side table? So Graham made the same kind of box as we did in the living room, except this one has drawers. And then if she actually needs to use it as a side table to hold water or her book, watch this. Genius. Now it's time for me to start styling the office area. I am styling the desk with some books, a candle, a beautiful vase, one of Ricky's giraffes, a frame with Ricky's family photo. This desk has drawers, which means that she can tuck away her keyboard and her mouse at the end of the day and keep it looking nice and clean and organized. I'm rolling in this chair to complete the desk nook. Before you guys get worried, we kept her ergonomic chair, but I just could not resist bringing in this chair. I am on the hunt for beautiful ergonomic chairs that look good in designed spaces. That is a goal. So we didn't get rid of her chair. I'm just letting everyone know. But I wanted it to look really cute for the reveal. Beside her desk, I'm bringing in this beautiful planter that we found at HomeSense and putting a cactus in it, really giving off those jungle bohemian vibes. Now it is time to decorate those Kallax shelves. I'm doing a mixture of storage baskets, books, another giraffe with a succulent, a watering can for her plants. I'm leaving some boxes empty so she can add her own things, but also mixing the sides I'm decorating. So some sides you can see from her bedroom area, other sides are decorated to face the living room. I just can't say enough good things about this Kallax. One of the last things I'm doing to complete this space is adding in a cute gallery wall on this wall. Ricky had so many family photos up, so I wanted to repurpose those, but put them in frames that felt more in line with the decor in this space. If you have decorative photo frames like this that you wanna hang on the wall, but they don't have any hangers, just use command strips. Now that I've got everything framed, I'm going to lay them out on the bed just to get the configuration that I want. Wow, I'm using a level, who am I? I love a good eclectic wall because you can just keep adding to it without having to be like super precise. Graham and I are measuring the distance between each frame so it looks, you know, somewhat uniform but really leaning into the eclectic kind of boho feel of it. Time to move on to the finishing touches. The first thing I'm doing is steaming the bed so it looks really crisp. I'm adding in these three hooks for her entryway. Graham has mounted the modem on the wall to hide the cords and I'm adding this poof Ricky had already. I'm hanging one more Desenio print and completing the kitchen breakfast nook with two stools. I'm placing some jungle cushions on the sofa. This gorgeous Birds of Paradise plant in the corner. A coffee table book and a candle. These colorful floor pillows are perfect. They add in function, but also style. A giraffe, of course, on the breakfast nook. And placing these poofs she had, the tops of these come off, so she has lots of storage in them, which is so useful. Finally, I'm adding in some underbed storage that she already had. How perfect do these look with the rest of the decor? Okay. It's time to bring Ricky in for the reveal. I have to say I'm feeling nervous for this reveal. I really, really hope she likes it. Let's bring her in. Okay, come walk towards me. Also, don't be alarmed, my team is in the kitchen, so. <laughs> okay, 
Can you walk me through what this space looks like before, before you open your eyes? Okay, so you walk in and then there was my bed on yeah. the left-hand side, my TV that was on like a plastic box. <laughs> my desk for yep. my office was kind of At like, the kitchen <laughs> island. <laughs> so not only did you not have a place to eat, but that couldn't have been comfortable. No, not really. No. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Oh my gosh! I knew it, I knew it. I just I just knew you would just knock it out of the park. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my gosh, the rug! I love the rug! Do you? I love it! Oh I God, love I'm it! So I love glad. it! I love it! I love it! I love it! I love it so much! I'm thank so you! Thank 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 you! What an incredible reaction from Ricky. I'm honored that I got to make this space happen for her. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have so many more studio fixes just like this one coming at you. And as always, I will see you guys next time.